They've taken our master. We must go tell John. Yes. Do not be afraid. He has risen. Now go and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and has gone ahead of you to Galilee. Now do as I say, for he is waiting for you just as he said he would be. This is a story that you've heard probably a thousand times. And you know, you can make a mistake about this story like you can the rest of theology. You can assume that you know this story. In reality, you don't. Because we all know the story that says that he died on the cross. And that's true. And we know the story about how he was placed in a borrowed tomb of Arimathea and how he rose again on the third day. That's true. But what we fail to do is we put our American culture into this story and we forget exactly the way the people who were involved in it were seeing the events that were taking place. If you will listen to me for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to unlock this in a way you've never heard it before. Because you can start with the fact that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he prayed this prayer. He said, I am sick even unto death. And that if there is any way in the world, please let this cup pass from me. Now roll back a couple of years to where the disciples are sitting in a boat in the book of Mark. And in the book of Mark, they are on the sea, and they're scared to death. The Bible actually in one Greek version says it was a white squall, one of the most ferocious storms known to man. And these disciples are sitting in the boat, and they are so fearful they're screaming for their life. And the Bible says that Jesus was sitting over here asleep. And that the disciples came up to him and said, Rabboni, do you not care that we perish? I'll be very careful with the word perish. And Jesus looks at them and stands up and he rebukes the winds and the waves. <laughs> and the Bible says they obeyed his will. But that's not the real story. The real story is what the Greeks believed and the Jews within what you call a Jewish triangle, literally, that lived during this time they did not believe in the afterlife. You see, they believed that you were, you lived and then you died. And they thought that if you fell out of the water, you literally fell into the hands of Hades, the God, the Greek God of death. 
And they were taught that Hades was the god of the underworld. You see, this, this concept of Hades transforms the way we see death in this scripture, in this resurrection story. Because Hades was the Greek god of the underworld. And you and I look at hell today, and we think it's underneath the earth, and it, it, it is, according to the scriptures. But we fail to understand that the Greeks saw everything above uh, humus, everything above earth, as being the heavens, and everything below the earth was the underworld. So the Greeks actually believed that, that, that if they fell out of the boat, that the God of Hades walked on the floor of the ocean. And when Jesus in Mark is sitting with his 12 disciples, and he says, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. He was literally looking at a gate. And if you go on the Greek study tour with me, I'm taking you to this gate. Because this gate was actually called the gate of Hades. The Greek people believed that once a year, if they performed orgies and sexual acts out in public, and they would perform the most destitute, degrading acts to humanity, that the Greek god Hades would come up out of the water from the underworld, and he would come up through the hole they knew as the gates of Hades. Well, that formed their understanding of what it meant 2,000 years ago when they said, he died because they believed that once you died that was it you didn't come back 